Mario has pretended long enough. This lovable plumber who constantly rushes in to save the day while looking like he's a member of the human race is not one of us. And let me tell you, figuring out the simple topic of his species leads us to a much stranger realization about Super Mario than I ever could have imagined. As we come to yet another trick theory video where I use my science background to throw out interesting facts and trick you into understanding the truth. Cause this plumber, this carpenter, this man is the key to understanding a different species as a whole. One that looks like us, talks like us, mimics us, even speaks the same languages and works a job. Even Nintendo, albeit controversially, can't seem to decide if they consider their character human or not. With members and even game directors within the company saying yes he is, while others of the same status within the company say no he is not. Originally, Mario's origins have been depicted as him and his brother Luigi as being transported to their parents, presumably somewhere in the Mushroom Kingdom by a stork. A stork who accidentally delivered them to the wrong couple, and was then attacked by Comic as he went about searching for the real ones. With Yoshi coming in to save baby Mario and Luigi as he then delivered them safely to the real parents. In this iteration, Mario and Luigi were shown as having come from a magical land in the sky, possibly one that where most people and birds alike would have to travel down a war pipe to get from there to the Mushroom Kingdom. Since then, Mario has repeatedly been shown to actually be from New York, or more specifically depicted as an Italian family living in Brooklyn, with him and his brother Luigi only arriving in the Mushroom Kingdom by accidentally traveling through a war pipe, whether it be a giant one underground or a bathtub. So that's it, Mario and his family are Italians living in Brooklyn, case closed, but not quite. While Mario is from this earth and is living among and around humans that look like you or me, something is very off. I mean, just look at the proportions of some of the people we see throughout the games and film that Mario sees and meets. I mean, some like Pauline and Peach do look much more normal in comparison to the much shorter men around them, who comparatively have large heads, smaller, rounder bodies, and even smaller legs. In case you were wondering, one easy rule of thumb to tell whether someone is a member of our species, and by ours I mean Homo sapiens, is that our legs account for exactly 50% of our height, no matter who you're looking at. But when we look at Mario, we find that his legs only account for 30% of his height. And the same goes for Luigi. Even worse, the length of the arm span for a regular human is supposed to match their height. A clean 1 to 1 ratio, but Mario's arm span accounts for over 112% of his height, with his hands clearly reaching down below his knees, with us putting similar numbers for Luigi. Yet we see Mario and similar proportioned individuals like his brother mingling with more familiar humans just fine. I mean, heck, even take for example Mario Odyssey, perhaps the most eyebrow-raising game of them all, where we see Mario walk and skip his way around actual human beings, human beings who all look, move, and act quite different from him. Even here, we find that the average height of a Homo sapien male in-game is 70 inches or 5 feet 10 inches, with a female being 65 inches or 5 feet 5 inches. That and their heads all follow the normal head to body size ratio of being around 1 to 8. Mario's head, on the other hand, is 1 to 3. Three of his heads equal his entire body. And beyond that, Mario's height in comparison is shown to only be a whopping 44 inches or just under 4 feet. Something is clearly off here. And I don't just mean with Mario, something larger is at play. Everything about these characters, the women he tries to swoon, and the society they live in are more crooked than we ever realized. As you likely know, another species of human used to walk the earth, known as Homo neanderthalensis, or simply Neanderthals, the closest and now extinct relative of modern humans. Relative as they were similar to modern humans, but they were not the same species, and extinct as they were all killed off by none other than Homo sapiens. But Mario is clearly not a Neanderthal, and what you may not know is that there existed more than just one other type of human species. In fact, we know of at least 21 other species, all who lived and died many raid by raid, ambush by ambush, as Homo 
Homo sapiens wore down their enemies, taking their land, their food, and rendered them all extinct. All except in this case, one. One species that for some odd reason was spared from the bloodbath of modern human takeover. A species that much like one known species of human was known to be much smaller. Some with very different body proportions. And funny thing is, human species like this were known to be island dwelling populations. Meaning they live sometimes rather far out on islands with very constrained resources and an open ocean guarding them from any other human species that might seek to take them out, at least for a while. And coincidentally, these humans, because they lived on islands with much more finite resources, fell to a phenomena called insular dwarfism. A phenomenon where animals like elephants and humans that would normally have much larger body sizes instead compensate for the lack of resources by evolving with much smaller body sizes sizes, and sometimes even brains, all estimated to be, what do you know, under four feet tall. A species that in Mario we now find practically everywhere, intermixed with modern humans. From Mario's dad, to his extended family, some of the females including his mom, heck even individuals like Professor E. Gad, all share his lower stature, more rounded body, and larger head proportion. But what about taller individuals like Waluigi and even Luigi? Luigi. What about these guys? Luigi does stand at a hulking 4 foot 1, while Waluigi is a towering 5 feet. Well, if you take island dwelling species like these guys off their islands and introduce them to more food and resources, you should generally see their brain sizes increase along with their bodies. But this still begs the question, why are they here, living among regular humans? Why was this species spared? If my research into simply being being able to pronounce humans like Homo florensiensis has taught me anything, is that they wouldn't have not only been spared, but forcibly integrated into Homo sapiens society without very good reason. A good reason that is tragically hiding in plain sight. Did you notice the big similarities among all of the human leaders across the Mario series? I'm talking Princess Peach of the Mushroom Kingdom, Princess Daisy, Rosalina who leads the Lumas, and even Pauline who was the acting mayor of New Donk City, or otherwise New York. I bet one sticks out to you. For one, they are all female. But the one similarity that may have gone unnoticed is that they, unlike Mario and many of the men we find everywhere, seem to unequivocally be Homo sapiens. At least from their DNA, they're mostly Homo sapien. Let me explain. Even other women we find like Mario's aunt all have the height and proportions of a modern human human, with Pauline being 5'9", and Peach being 5'6", along with their arm spans being roughly that of their height and their legs accounting for approximately 50% of their height. In fact, it's mostly just the females that we see looking completely regular. At least there's more of them than there are men. But why? Why is it that modern humans let them not only live, but live with them? Well, it all adds up. Adds up to one inevitable conclusion. The lack of male the integration of an isolated species, this more evolved species needed to allow the smaller one to live or else face extinction themselves. Along with the Mario females, we also see other much comparatively taller individuals, like Foreman Spike, who has a far closer one-to-one -one arm span to height ratio, who also finds himself as a top dog among his shorter peers. And like many of the other more sapien-esque individuals, also has a much more slender nose rather than the sizable hobbit bulb that we see on our other human species. Sure, Spike and the other Homo sapiens' heads are a bit bigger, but that bit of their DNA likely comes from crossbreeding. The existence of Mario, Luigi, their parents, are a sign of an accidental virus, a plague or otherwise something that killed off the majority of the male Homo sapien population to where the remaining females, whether their parents sent them away, not being able to go with them because they were sick or kept them around needed to keep the males of another species alive. A species that was spared from the plague due to it having remained isolated and thus protected on its far off islands, with this species only expanding or being found after the damage had been done. It's really no surprise that the human leaders we see throughout the 
Mario franchise are homo sapien females because they come from a society that had to become matrilineal or basically with a majority of the males being dead or dying female leadership became the norm and thus the females like what happens with many other species within the animal kingdom became born to leadership to be the natural leaders of whatever society they find themselves in especially one where they are interbred with another just to survive but if none of this was very interesting then I saved an interesting fact for last. When Mario first arrived on the scene, he just barely beat out one of the most popular franchises of all time, being Pokemon, that sold a massive 47 million copies of their first generation game, with Mario narrowly making it to 48 million copies sold. As in our next entry, we go over the science behind what your starter Pokemon choice should be based on your personality. Keep in mind though, it's all just a clever trick. See you in the next one.